So verse 41. Let's all them. Psalm 78 verse 41. Yes, again and again they tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They did not remember His power. The day when He redeemed them from the enemy. Amen. Then he, he, when you continue reading, don't continue reading some seventy. He talks about all that God did in Egypt, right? That's where you find out that actually the darkness was so thick that they could feel it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the darkness was so thick they could feel it. That's why. But here is something I want you to get. New guy, the Bible says that in all of this that they were doing, they actually limited the Holy One of Israel. This is not a address one in sense limited. This one was God Himself. They limited Him. As in the way God wanted to show his power, power, they didn't allow him. Imagine someone is skating and the person wants to yik a check. And then they are amateur skating around him. They can't control where they are going. So it limits the person from expressing his full potential because he may end up hitting into them. So God wanted to reveal power, power, and wanted to do things. But the people limited him. Like that was how much power the people had over God. They could limit him. And so, that's what I'm saying. That it's, so, it's so serious. You come to understand that, hey, <laughs> the responsibility is on you. That is why there is judgment in the first place. And that everything God has said is what he wants to happen, not what will happen. Because we talk about the power of prophecy, the power in the word, the power in this, the power in that, and and all so much that sometimes believers decide to sleep so that the word will happen. Like they decide to interfere in the fulfillment of the prophecy. Who are we to help God? Let God do his thing. But again, I'm summarizing to say, when Adam in the garden needed help, God didn't say, I'm going to help him. He said, I'm creating help for him. They should help themselves. Like, it is on you, guys. It is on you. And I'll take you to the last scripture before we go. Acts chapter 3, verse 4. Acts chapter 3, verse 4. Where is he now? Acts chapter 3, verses 4. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. You see, apart from Jesus' failed miracle when he went back to his hometown, the Bible says he could not do many miracles there. This is another example of a failed miracle in the Bible. Yeah, so this miracle actually failed. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, Peter didn't act, we couldn't heal the, 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 the guy at the lame gate. It's written there plainly. But you didn't see it. You read too fast. Let's continue. Yes, please. But Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold I for you. I do not have any silver or gold for you. Uh-huh. But I'll give you what I have. But I will give you what I have. Jesus Christ, the Nazarene. Get up and walk. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene. Get up and walk. Sit down. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm sure Peter saw the day Jesus did it to the man at the, at the pool of Bethesda. I'm sure Peter saw the thing. He entered So he said he also practice it. Jesus said, he said, he said, I've been here for 38. The man had been here for 38. He said, there is no one to help me. But I just said, pick up your mat and go home. The man stood up. Hey! 38 years, lame. They asked him to do the one thing he couldn't do in life. The one thing he said, I don't have the gifts for. The one thing he said, I don't have the talent for. God said, do it. 
I just released some geese. Eh? <laughs> God, God said, do it. And at God's word, he found out that it was actually easy. Today I saw on someone's shirt. He said, if it, if it be easy, do one. Who was I with? Where? where whose shirt was that? Uh, oh, it was an interview. Oh, yes, yes, at the shop. Okay, yeah, I remember now. They wrote on the guy's shirt, if it be easy, do one. That whenever you find out that it's easy, it means that God's word preceded. Yeah. Yes. So he actually stood up, picked his mat and went home. Aish. Peter is also walking. The lame guy is there. He said, the guy was looking at him, he said, look. Silver and but what I have, I give unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, rise and walk. No. <laughs> According to the Bible, nothing happened. Nothing happened. The man was still there, lame in his ankle. The words of Peter were for people. Continue reading for me. Verse 7. The so when Peter realized this, what did he do? Then Peter took the lame man by the right hand. When he realized the thing didn't happen, then the man he said, Get up and walk. The man was still seated there. He said, What well, lie? Did... He said, God, God will not be shamed today. Please, please sit down. Please sit down. He said, God will not be shamed today. So the Bible says, Now he what? helped, he took the man by the right hand and he helped took the him. man by the right hand and, and helped him up. And he said, ah. Now, do you know what happened when he did that? Listen. And as he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed. So, the first time Peter spoke, he actually didn't get healed. That's why he couldn't get up. Do you know when the healing happened? When effort was made from the man like this. When the effort came in, in the process of the effort, the power of God snuck in there somewhere. So that it almost felt as if we can't tell whether it was a healing or it was actually because he was raised with force. Oh, that is why it is difficult to tell whether it was the grace of God or it was your hard work. Because somewhere in there, there is always a cooperation. I said because somewhere in there, there is always a cooperation. We call it a cooperation. Cooperation. We are doing the operation together. It's a cooperation. It's almost as if God says, I listen, I gave the earth to you. You have dominion. I can't just sneak in and do whatever I want. So start. When you are in the process, I can join. <laughs> I enter into your house. Your table is not rightly positioned. I can't come and say, I don't like where the table is. Hey! Who am I? This is your house. But you attempt to move the table, I can come and help you. Oh, come on. So somewhere in there, there has always been a cooperation. Almost to say, it's as if there wasn't a woman with the issue of blood. Who had to decide that even though it was against the law for me to be here amongst people, I will make effort to break the law, take this risk and come. Even though the cost of this is stoning me to death, I will still try. As if she didn't make the effort in a crowd that were thronging Jesus, where did she pass through people's feet to go and hold his garment? Almost to say there wasn't a cost of people stepping on her, people pushing her. At least some few steps on the face, on the back, on the hand, but somewhere within that, she was able to grab the hem of his garment. Then the virtue left. When she said in her heart, that, listen, this man can heal me. The healing didn't happen. I have to touch. You see, it was faith that she said, if I can touch, I'll be made whole. But the faith was not enough. When she applied effort to the faith, then the faith happened. Almost to say that when God sent Elijah to the widow, it, it's almost to say that it was not enough that God could have just said, I'm going to make jars and oil appear. No, for some funny reason, she had to go and borrow vessels. As if the going to happen. For some funny reason, she had to take the little oil she had. As if there was no miracle going to happen. For some funny reason, she had to start pouring. Then that was when the miracle happened. Somewhere in there, there is always a cooperation. 
It's almost to say Jesus couldn't cause manna to rain again. He said, is there any food? And when they brought the bread and the loaves, he looked up, gave thanks and break. And as he broke, the miracle started. As he broke, the miracle started. He broke the thing. Before the disciples turned it, had regenerated again. He broke. Before they turned it, had regenerated again. He broke. And he kept on breaking. And before they realized, the crowds had been fed with 12 baskets left over. It's almost to say there cannot be an action from the power of God without a cooperation from man. Can I shock you? The power of God is not in front of you. It is behind you. In other words, God's power is not going to make it happen so you follow. You will move so the power will follow you. Because in essence, you are actually of more value than the power. And so the power is there too. Do you get it? I said, in essence, you are of more value than the power. So the power cannot lead you. You move the power for you. That is why the wall of Jericho won't come down before they get there. That is why God will have to tell the children of Israel, move! And the sea will part, move. Moses, why cries down to me? Tell them to move. It's like they had to make some effort. In the process of doing the thing, somewhere in there, the miracle will happen. Listen to me. I went to Kumasi and I preached. And the title of the sermon was Dark in the Light. And somewhere inside there, the title of the sermon changed to On God. And I said, listen to me. Don't question God about what he has asked you to do. Because some of you, you are like the lepers that were at the gate of Jerusalem. They were like, if we enter into the city to go and look for food, those stone us to death. The enemy's camp is over there. If we stay here hungry, we will die. If we go into the enemy's camp to go and see if we can get food and they catch us, go kill us straight away. It's death on every angle, but there is one death that comes with the possibility of satisfaction. So let's choose that one. And the Bible says they decided to move. And when they stood up and they were going towards the enemy's camp, the Bible says the enemies were in their camp and all of a sudden they heard footsteps of chariots and horses and armies marching. And then they scream, the Israelites are upon us, run. So the lepers got there and then there was no one there. And then I remember I shouted, it's on God. That means move, God will respond. It's not your problem, move, God will respond. But that day, some way, somehow, I didn't remind them, I didn't tell them that the, the lepers had to move. So long as they were sitting down, there was no earthquake. <laughs> So long as they were sitting down, there was no sound of chariots and horses. When they stood up with their weak steps, once there was effort involved, some way, somehow, the miracle had to happen. Listen to me. The point I'm making is that, yes, of course, we say it's on God, but it's on you too. In fact, it's on you and God. <laughs> Paul says, as co-partners, as co-laborers with God. As co-laborers with God. Yes, I know in your heart you want to be a great lawyer. God has even said it that you will be a great lawyer. But the thing is that, listen, he's not going to sit there and at the end of your school, he snaps his finger and says, lawyer. Make the effort somewhere in there. You find out that, hey, thank God. Oh, if I didn't do this, I wouldn't have met this woman. Hey, if I didn't do this, I wouldn't have met this man. Hey, standing hard has really paid off. Oh. Because of this, now I get to do this. I get to, it's like there is a favor following me. Get to make the effort. Great. As we read in Matthew 9, 4, Jesus said, I must quickly carry out the assignment that the Father has given me. He said, I must quickly carry it out. So you must quickly carry out what God has given you. Yeah, quickly carry it out. Like, you must quickly do it. You don't have time to waste. You must quickly do it. Like, you must quickly carry out the assignment that God has because it's on you. You must quickly. God is there. He has given you the assignment. He has traveled to a far country. You'll be coming back soon. He has given you the assignment. It's on you. Like, you have to do it. You have. You have to rise up and do it. There is a time period even to it. You have to do it. Listen. Commander. 
Yes, I understand what you're saying, but there is also a realm of grace. Paul said, not, yet, not I, but the grace of God. Please, before you quote that, read the verse before. He said, I labored more abundantly than all the apostles. Then he adds, yet not I, but the grace of God. In other words, there was some foolish hard work I did better than the guys, and that's why I yielded more results than them. He said, I labored more abundantly than the guys, yet not I, but the grace of God. Have you ever read the story of when Prophet Agabus came to prophesy to the guy? Prophet Agabus comes and says, whose belts are these? He just picks the belt. Then he ties his own hand and his legs. And he says that the way I tied my hands and my legs, that's how the owner of this belt is going to be imprisoned and tied. Paul said, why are you people trying to make me sad? It's not only my, my task to be imprisoned for God. I even want to die for him. So if I'm imprisoned, it's too low. I want to die. Imprisonment is like safe journey. I want to die. And every prophecy is pointing to the fact that, hey, Paul, there is danger waiting for you. Danger waiting for you. Danger waiting for you. The guy ignores all and moves into the city. Look at that. That will look as if someone will be like someone who is disobeying the prophet. And he moves into the city, walks in there, and starts preaching. Then in the midst of, you know, Jesus was sending angels to talk, talk to Paul. When he did that move, Jesus appeared again. He himself. He says, and the Lord appeared to Paul and said, just as you have preached this, I'm taking you even to the higher places to go and preach. Hey. Like, can you imagine? The guy was actually cooperating with God. So, actually, there is danger there. Even his vim, he, he moved with some vim into the place. God said, Charlie, I like the way you are working there. We'll go, we'll continue. Let's go higher. Hey, hey, let's go higher. Hey, see, the point I'm saying is that God can tell you that, listen, I'm giving you, I'm giving you a business that will hit Ghana in the next three years. God said that because when he looked at how passionate you are about this, he said, hey, if this guy can communicate that passion to this business, his business can have the potential to hit Ghana in the next three years. You understand what I'm saying? Like, there is a certain efficacy God is seeing in you. That's why he's saying what he's saying. Someone said, what is prophecy? He says, prophecy is not a prediction of the future per se. Now, I'm going to tell you this. Someone didn't say I'm saying Anyway, so prophecy is not per se a prediction of the future. Should I tell you something? Now, have you ever seen children running? Right? They have not fallen down. The child is just running. Then all the adults are like, hey, 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 hey. Have you ever seen that before? Have you ever seen that scene? A baby is running. He's just going. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then all the adults are like, hey, 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 hey. Because of what they have seen over and over again. Because of their intelligence over that of the child they were able to tell that the next thing that comes is a fall based on the way she's running based on the balance of the running based on the floor the next thing is a fall so somebody catch the baby before he falls so the parents are prophesying not because they per se know the future but at their level of intelligence they can tell what will happen now can i shock you so consider your level of intelligence compared to that of god there are things you are doing now God is looking at you and no, in the next days you will do this. In the next four years, this will happen. This, this, this will happen. This, 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 that will happen. This, this, this will happen. This, this, this will happen. Because of his level of intelligence. Because the law about the omniscience of God is that if God decides actually to be all-knowing, then he'll be an unfair judge. That means that he knew actually that all this is going to happen. No. But he decides in his omniscience that no, I'm going to decide to not know everything. So that it adds to my justice. As a good judge, let's see the turn of events. Adam, where are you? There was no other spiritual meaning behind this thing. He says, Solomon Goran said, I've heard it. I'm coming down to see for myself. There was no other interpretation of the scripture. No, God meant what he was saying. That is because he decided that to be able to be a good judge to this whole earth realm, he would have to decide to shut down the omniscience of God. That's what I was explaining in the beginning. What God cannot do is part of his power. Listen, listen, listen. This thing what God cannot do does not exist. Actually, what God cannot do exists a lot of it.
Help him. Guys, so we'd have to move, we'd have to work, we'd have to run, we'll have to fly. There are times where your hands you even have to get dirty and dirty to, do, to make sure what God has said happens. Who do you think was anointing David and go to go and slaughter people? Wait, when you Im- Abi, when you imagine that and David conquered all the Philistines, you, you, the Philistines, you didn't imagine them as human beings, you imagine them as a name. And, and David conquered the Philistines. You didn't imagine that those were people's husbands and fathers. You didn't imagine, it didn't cross your mind that those are people's husbands and fathers. Can you imagine? Like that's how that's how God is. After David doing all these things, he said, David, you will not build my temple for me. Your hands are too bloody. But God, are you not the one who anointed me to? Yes, but, but, but David, your hands are too bloody. Is it not true? It's true, so you can't build for me. Wow. So there are instructions God has given. There are things God has told you. Timothy, stir up the gift of God. That gift of which was in your mother and was in your grandmother. Like, can you imagine? Grandmother, then down to mother, then down to him. But guess what? He was walking the same path. They said, stir it up. In other words, it was about to be passed to his hand. Pause the let's end it there. Stare it up. So that is that is the complexity of God's cooperation with man. Or else God will say, This month this will happen. By the end of this year, this will happen. Next year, this will happen. And you'll be surprised. You watch it won't happen. Which has already happened to a lot of you. There are convictions you receive, things you receive. They didn't happen. The whole they didn't happen. They didn't happen. They didn't happen. It's not like God lied to you. Is that God showed you the way you didn't go? That's why in Ephesians, Paul says that. He says, he says God exalted us, blah, 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 to the right hand side of the Father and has now made us Christ supreme over everything. And he's the head of the church, which is his body. Do you understand? He's the head of the church, which is his body. He means that everything. And where is Christ seated? Where is he seated? Above, in heaven. Where is his body? Oh, one more time I'm asking. Where is Christ seated? Where is his body? Where is Christ seated? Where is his body? So when Christ decides to walk, who walks? His body. Where is that body? Who is that body? So, so that logic alone makes you understand that he is to some extent powerless or as powerful as you make. Listen to me, in a certain sense of false humility, we try to go like, oh no, it wasn't me, it was by the grace of God. He said, like, hey, hey, Charlie, you guys, there was some awesome work you did out there. He said, no, no, but the truth, the truth of the matter is, li- listen, man of God, the truth of the matter is, you fasted, you prayed, you stirred up your gift of healing, you went out there, you decided deliberately, bore the cost, took money from people, and were able to get a venue, organize a meeting, and people got healed. That means if you had spent more time growing your, your gift, more people would have gotten healed. And that means if you had spent less time growing your gift, less people would have gotten healed. That means, are you trying to say, you said it was, oh, Jesus was glorified. Who told you he was glorified? Did he tell you we expected 13 people to get healed? Did he tell you you are living up to your full potential? When he decided to walk, did he tell you that you took the full step he wanted you to take? No, you are putting in effort. You can put in more. Or maybe you even did too much. Maybe that's not how far he wanted to go. Yeah. Rick Joyner, Rick Joyner had an experience with the, the spirit of wisdom, the personification of wisdom. And then wisdom told him that when the enemy cannot stop you, he pushes you a little harder. It's like when Satan wants to stop you, he can't stop you. He has more speed. Yeah, that's what he does. 
So, like we, listen, listen. Again, I'm repeating. If it was on God, if God was the one responsible, the God was the one who had to do it, He wouldn't send you the Holy Spirit as a help. We, we I, I think, I think sometimes we just refuse to think. Oh. Like sometimes we refuse to think. Like we, we create the concept and we bury our head inside. We behave like ostriches or giraffes. Sorry, giraffes. Rather. You know what giraffes do? When a prey or sorry, a predator is around that they want to hide from. They bury their head. Like their whole body is there. Then the giraffe will bury, it will go down and head. It thinks that once it cannot see, it means the enemy cannot see me. It's like we take a, a spiritual concept and we bury our head inside. We say, forget every other thing. I'm here. And we try to encourage ourselves in it. And when it's not working, we look for more other words to encourage ourselves. When the thing is simple, screaming out to us. See, today you have learned a lot too. You have learned a lot. I wish I could do a recap for those who just came, but we've talked some really, really deep and quality stuff. Yes. And so, we must quickly carry out the assignments that the Father gave us. All of us are full of potencies, abilities, unique giftings, and unique purposes that God has given us to do. Most of us are supposed to reach out to people out there that God has appointed for us to reach out to. People that whose lives you're supposed to be an inspiration to. People who you are supposed to pull out of their mud. People that you're supposed to pull out of the Marie Clay. People that you're supposed to suck out of darkness. People that you're supposed to help, give them wisdom. Different people. People have never received love before. You are God's point of contact for love to them. And God will continue to not have arms and legs. The longer we keep postponing, the longer we keep procrastinating, the longer we keep expecting that you will come and do what he sent you to do. Your mother has sent you to go and buy her something. Then you get to the market and you are waiting. But the person who sent me will come and do it. I believe in her, in her grace. If he will do it, why did he send you? In Kunim? Hey, some of you will bomb academics. Listen, you bomb. You, you know it. Satan's self will be angry at you. You feel it. <laughs> you, you bomb mercilessly. And when you come, I realize that there is nothing else to do. Because that was God's word. That was what God wanted you to do. That, like, that was it. That was it. They, they, they realize there is nothing else to do. That's why people blame churches a lot. Do you know why? They finish, right? And then <laughs> it's sad. Somebody's brother called me and said, I hear my younger brother is following you. This, that, 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 that. And you pastors, you use people. He said, you pastors, you use people now. When you become great, then you leave them. I mean, then you, in their lives, nothing will be amounting to their lives. I, I, I said, I don't know which pastors you are talking about. Me, people use me. I don't use them. <laughs> he's sitting here right now. He's listening to me, smiling. Be- people use me. I don't use them. Yes, there may be pastors out there that are using people. I don't even want to call them pastors. There may be people out there that in the name of God and because of a misunderstanding of God's ways, they are misusing people and resources and human beings. That is there, but not here. Not here. has happened. We've added this piece life, this piece life, that piece life, this piece life. You can go online and check our teachings and see if we are taking from people or we are adding to them. The things we teach people, they go and pay thousands of dollars to listen to from our, all kinds of people. Someone said, Commander, it should be your prayer that you'll be hated. Because if they hear of you, will not have you. Yeah. So this is good information for good food. Some of the things I share with you, even go out there and we say, you think that we, we are devils. We came to attack the church. Meanwhile, the Bible is spitting it out plainly in their faces. But they cannot see it. Because they have molded the thing to be an occupation. 
so it has to fit in like it's a job it has to fit right so if the scripture is like this you then let's bend it small That's why the prophecy has given some of you will never have. Because you are waiting for the prophecy. Peter said, the power of God doesn't go before you, it's behind you. It's behind. When you move, the power infiltrates and then it works from behind the scenes. To put in the hard work. Is that okay? I like I like the atmosphere. So put in the hard work. The Bible says that the hands of the diligent lead over to great riches, but that of an idle person to poverty. Can you imagine the hands of the diligent? Somebody who decides I'm going to move in spite. I'm going to work hard in spite. He says that it is a sure way, 100% guaranteed to wealth. Period. Like there are no the hard work, diligence, the hands of the diligence. It leads only to plenty. And diligence is a virtue that is, that is expressed not only in hard work. Diligence is also expressed in how to make your hard work work. So, if I ask you to, to do something, and you go and research about it. It is part of diligence. So that you can do it well. So diligence is not only hard work. You get it? The pure seller is maybe working hard, but they may not be adding diligence. Because if there was diligence, there would be a motivation to convert it into something bigger. But it's like, I'm just satisfied with this, my prophet. And I'm okay here. Let me be here. So diligence leads to plain process. And that's why the world is fulfilling the Bible more than you. Because they are, they are not relying on any grace. They are not waiting for any grace of God to do anything. The guy knows if my business will work, I have to research. If my business will have to connect with more people. If my business will have to do this, this, and this. And I'm repeating to you that, listen, stop the fanfoonery. Look at what God did. Adam needed help in the garden. God didn't say, I'm coming to help him. He said, let's look for another human being to help him. So be there. Don't build relationships. Be there. Don't listen. Don't, don't connect with people. Don't move when God has asked you to move. You will see that then you, you will hear all the prophecies. You will have God and then you will be the furthest away from Him. Because you don't understand His partings for work. We read about Uzziah's story over and over again, right? Young, 16-year-old boy, they put him as king, right? And then the guy just grows and turns Jerusalem into an empire. How? And he said that they said that he, as long as he sought God, God caused him to prosper. Wow. Then what else happened? Then the Bible starts to give his accreditation. So he built the city of Elah. He raised an army. He did this. Now we come to see the work dimension. Then he gives us the work dimension. And then in the end, he says, he became very mighty for he was helped of God. And he says, and God brought him a lot of helpers. And he became great for he was marvelously helped. In other words, even though it said he sought God's help. He says, as long as Uzziah sought God, God caused him to prosper. The real thing God did was for him was that God gave him direction as to how to prosper. So God kept on bringing people his way. Connections. Connections. Now the guy had a lot of people that were there to offer different kinds of help. But the guy became a formidable force. The Bible says his fame spread all the way to the borders of Egypt. The greatest civilization, Egypt at that time, head of the guy. Some small country's king. He said, we head of this guy. Look at what Solomon did. His, his father David fought wars and everything. When David Solomon came, he didn't really have a lot of enemies. You know what happened to his enemies? He converted all of them to fathers in law. There's a treaty now. Your daughter is in love with me, sir. No, you can't go and fight your son in law's country. You won't. To the point that he married the Pharaoh's daughter. As he was marrying plenty, it wasn't per se because he was a womanizer. How many women could he sleep with in a year? 
No, there was something more than that to the whole reason for his sleep. He's marrying the woman. Like, like, see, see. Irene, it can work. It can work. You just, you, 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 you slack for you. just need to push the restart button. That's all. Serum, it can work. Michael B, it can work. And for those of you that God has already given instructions, listen to me, it's time to change gear. For some time now, you put it on free and you call free God. But it was just gravity, momentum that was moving. Now it's time to actually own what God gives you and start to change the gear. Like just change it. Just change it. Just like just try. Just just change it. You just put that one, one self. When you put that one and you start moving, you realize that it's sweet. You put that. At the point, hard work becomes pleasurable. I remember when I started exercise, when I started hitting the gym. I remember at a point, it's that Where is free mind? Where's my instructor? Aha. Uh-huh. Good. I was like, at the point, Charlie, I can't keep this down. Guys, you won't believe what I did. Quality time I was using to pray, I just said, Father, enlarge the body. No, no. <laughs> no jokes. I, I was praying and I was like, God, please, this one you need to help. I know you understand the schedules <laughs> and my time. So, Father, just do something for me. Charlie, sometimes when I think about the prayer, I feel shy, Safo. Like, I feel shy. I feel, I feel shy. I'll feel shy, Safo. Then, then, when he said, he told me, he said, come on, I just add it to your schedules. So, at the point, there was some more consistency. Then I started going, started going, morning and evening, morning and evening. Then, the things that is within me now. The, the way my, one day my mother said, Osofu, why are you taking all this body to Osofu? What? What? Osofu. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Charlie, you are going to move out here and get some radical energy, do what God has asked you to do, right? Yes. Benny, you are going to do some radical stuff, right? Yeah. You are going to. Your music gift can be a blessing to the world, to generations yet to come. But you need to put in the work. You need to ask yourself, why is it that certain musics didn't transcend certain years? Like it was the music in that time. But why is that I couldn't cross into the next season? But why is it that some of the things crossed this? Still old tunes, old rhythms, but still it transcended. Why? I'm a different part of the remix. Like, what was the difference? Steady, secular songs, gospels, steady everything. You are, you are looking at something more than just yourself. Ask yourself, why am I supposed to sing in this way? Why is this the part? Why can't, why can't I create something more? Like ask questions and put in put in the way. Build yourself from the inside. You understand? When you step out there, you know that somebody that is carrying the energy of God has come. You'll be a revelation of God to people. Listen to me, no one out there will see God. You, you, you are the evidence of God to them. Yeah. I was last Monday, um, 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 yeah, Joshua introduced a friend to me. And I was telling him something. I told him that I said, listen to me. I said, they say the Bible was the book that um, people used to put people in slavery and all and stuff. I was like, nonsense. The people propagating this news, some of them have never even read the Bible before. And they're saying that the Bible is a book that is used, the white man brought to use to enslave black minds. And this day, the black mind open your mind because the book enslaves you. And I said, nonsense. The book you are telling me enslaves me. The first page of the book tells me that God made me like a God. Like God. Like the first book, the first page of the book is that break out of humanity, become God. Like that's the first page. Like find the God within you. That's the first page of the book. Wait, are you sure you, are, you know the book you are talking about? Like are you sure you understand the book? It's 
So let us see. Let us see that Christ in you. Like, come with a certain energy. The Bible says the whole of creation groans, waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. <laughs> Can you imagine? Like, earth is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. In other words, when an earthquake happens, right, and then they are calling on God because of the earthquake, number one, they are wasting God's time, they are wasting their voice, and nature is getting angrier. Because nature is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God, not God. Not waiting for the manifestation of Jesus. He came already, he's gone. They are waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. You grow so much in potency, spiritually. You grow so much. Hone your energy to the peak. When you pass through a place, a place let nature sense you. Like let everything around sense your energy. Sometimes I can, I'm walking somewhere and I can feel heavy, so heavy. I know that I'm dominating the atmosphere. One day I was coming back. My mom always loves when I tell this story. I was coming back from school. And then on my way, I got down by the junction. And then when I got down, God opened my ear and my eye. When men was open my ear and asking, I have a, a, a visual graphical experience, right? All of a sudden, I'm hearing as if chaos was happening. So to me, I'm looking around to see where are the people running and screaming, right? I'm hearing people running, screaming like, you can real chaos is happening everywhere like you could feel it was something big and I'm, I froze like I froze no I, I froze I mean mentally because my body is like moving and I'm wondering I'm like what's happening what's happening what's happening all this is and what's up what's happening then all of a sudden I'm seeing creatures all kinds of creatures so many creatures and they are all running haywire everywhere in the whole neighborhood And then there is the still small voice that says, Jesus, your presence, your presence, like it has taken domain over this whole environment. Like they are feeling the thing. So there is confusion everywhere. Your presence has taken domain over this whole neighborhood. It should happen. It should happen. Like it. At times when we'll be in the hostel, this one come and visit them, and then we are walking, we are walking, and then you, you people, when they tell you things, you think it's a joke, and then and then sometimes I'll meet ladies on campus, right? Zero percent human. <laughs> when I say zero percent human, I'm literally mean zero percent human. These are projections of marine spirits, we're also walking around mingling, right? Then I see one, and then I sense that. Ah, She's this. And then almost all the time, as soon as they pass, suddenly they can be busy chatting with people, doing their thing. As soon as they pass by us, then they look back. What, what or who did we just pass by? We felt that way. Who was I with that? We met a woman, Judah, and Richmond. Yeah. We met a woman, I was like, hey, this is one of the main, 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 main supervisors in the neighborhood. Though. At night, she flies to supervise the, the neighborhood. Right? And so we are walking and I said, hey, look at this woman. And then we pass by and the woman starts to speak, right? And she's just and she's looking at me. Like over a long distance, she couldn't go. She stopped just looking at me. I was with Derek. Well, the gym, I was with Derek at the gym. We entered into the gym and sitting lady got angry. Yeah, we entered into the gym. Now we office out your fire. Foolish boy, what do you mean? I'm leaving this place. Nonsense. <laughs> No, 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 not a church service in the gym, like just normal hot after hot morning, right? It was in the morning. It was in the morning. Derek is here, he'll tell you the story. Now, there is a certain energy that was released in the place. It just takes over. Free mind is there. My gym is right there, he'll tell you. The times that we are in the gym and he's playing. You know, when we went to the gym, now suddenly we play gospel songs, urban gospel songs in the gym. And the guys in the gym, these are hard guys in my gym, right? And there are times when the song will be playing, the song playing, the song is going on well. It's about to switch then. So I tell him, I said, repeat that song for me. When he gets there, the thing repeats. The word repeats by itself. Like, it, you, you grow in energy, spiritual energy so much. Like, let you be the evidence of God to people. He said, let us make them in our image. Like, once you are here, I don't need to be around. Like, your words are potent enough. That's why Jesus would say, well, it's his words, not the word of God. He said, will not doubt his word. Like, can you imagine? Christ wants you to live in this understanding that my words don't fall to the ground. 
they don't return to me void unless they have accomplished what I sent them to. Like so, so everything you are saying is hanging in the air, is moving around, is trying to be fulfilled. Like so much power exuding from you day and night. And you mean business. You get to school when you sit behind your books. You mean business. When God has asked you to start a business, you don't do one week and then take a break one week. You mean business. God said, I'm taking a break from life one week. You mean business, consistency. Because you understand who you are. You are a revelation of God to people. And not in code, spiritual, in the sense of immaterial. It lingers through the material. It lingers through the physical. If it is real estate, I'm going to build things and bring up blow the minds of people. If it is fashion, I'm going to come up with things that will blow the minds of people. If it is product, if it is food, whatever it is, you are, you, are, you are putting a burden on yourself that I'm going to be a revelation of God to people. You people are not the same as your colleagues. You people are not ordinary. You are not normal. You think you have the mind of Christ. If any of you here should fail or become irrelevant in life, listen to me. You are, you are beautiful. <laughs> you fail or become irrelevant in life. No, no, not with these things that I'm telling you. Yeah. And if this is your first time hearing me, that is with Pastor Tuesday. He's talking and sitting with the church. And you know the power of prayer and fasting. Who oh, are you asking me? You're asking me if I know the power of prayer and fasting. No, I, I, I'm, if you listen to me, I'm not saying don't pray and fast. I'm saying that the power of God is not in front, it is behind. So start the work. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that don't fast and pray so that the work will start, then later you enter. I'm saying start doing the thing, then you can be praying and fasting into it. I'm saying don't start out, stand outside and expect the car engine to start. Sit inside and spark it. That's when the engine starts. I think I've said enough. I've said too much even today. We are world changers. No? We are living in an impact in our generation and in our time that no one has ever seen on the spiritual skill, on the physical skill, is going to be massive. God is raising his people. He's training them in his own way. In places like this. And when God shouts attack, you're going to see people in all kinds of fields just, just, just out there doing their thing. Causing serious impact. Let me just talk to God a little and right after we are done. Thank you, Father. Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Father. You sent me to these ones. That was the assignment and that is the assignment. Words that empower. Words that empower, Lord. Words that empower. 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 None of them here is going back the way they came. Lord, these tombre egos prahadevos karo ushki bekete deka veni usolish. Rabinus kavala hadasa shas. None of them here is going back the same way they came. Thank you so much, Father, that even by today's session, demonic webs are falling off them. Body kisata shama dekovala awa kisatas. Things that were holding them down demonically are falling off them. Rabbi Nuskavri ishto Can the keyboard come down for me? Lagi noshkabra dekos barata veshkas. 
Lady Baragababan was Josh. Thank you, Father. Anything that was a spiritual wall of limitation, I declare that that wall is breaking down now. The force of God's power, the force of God's energy is pulling down that wall now. Thank you, Father. Now I declare that energy is rekindled, zeal is rekindled, a refilling of their tank. Malika Sanchom Bede Molo. A refilling of their tank. People whose morale and energy were down. I thank you, Father, for a refilling of their tank. Watinama Watinama Shonves. Bradika Zalwatago Shebe. Maruske Briente de Vino. Anything at all that had any demonic link on anybody here. I break that link. I break that link. I break that link in the name of Jesus. Body kashaba baba yeko sabas. Maliwa class, maliwa class. Robrindo skabra hajimbas komano ngaso. Now, anyone who was sick in any part of your body, anyone who has any form of infirmity in any part of your body, I declare healing now. I declare that it is gone now. I declare that you are healed now. I declare that you are healed now. I declare that you are healed now. Whatever it was from little conditions like headache stomach pains pain in the joint or in the body i declare it is gone it is gone by the power of the holy spirit thank you father that your people are free now and i declare and i speak that anything that awaits your matters diseases of the blood diseases of the kidney diseases of the prostrate of the genitalia diseases of the brain any major disease that is still lingering in anybody's body i dissolve it now by the power of the spirit i declare you are free you are free you are free you are free whoever it is that your ear wasn't hearing as clear one wasn't hearing as clear as the other i speak that the capabilities of the other ear are amplified and i declare healing your ear is cleansed completely by the action of angels now. I declare your healing. I declare your healing. I declare your healing. In the mighty name of Jesus. You are healed in your body completely to be able to execute what God has called you to do. Thank you so much, Father. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that your people are free. They are free of addictions. They are free of anything that holds them down. They are free. Ah, I see a wave of God move from the front all the way to the back almost to say it's flashing out everything that is not of God thank you Father that this is done thank you Lord thank you Father thank you Father thank you Father Lisa Branda Zanus, Vilero Doshas, Bradis of Rentes, Paragadaga Vavanua Solish Tamas, Pela Cantus Mashfados. Hey, Father, thank you. Thank you so much, Father. Let these words not be forgotten. When we go, let us be able to practice everything we have been taught today. We thank you, Lord. And one more time, I pray for healing. Healing. For anyone who still needed healing. For anyone who still needed healing. And if your case is spiritual, I, I speak that whatever entities are responsible for this are rebuked now. I pray for parents as well. And I speak in the name of Jesus that you will be their joy. You will not fail them. You will bring joy to them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Alright, so Nyamin Shiramuni I want I say it in God. New more, new more. Bless you. are. New more job. And then, what again? Tagbani. Hey! He's speaking to Zekaji Keke Suprahani. But it sounded a little correct at first. 
So God bless you guys so much. And thank you all so much for coming today. And you know what we are going to do? When I release you, please say hello to somebody. Uh, just say hello to somebody. Just say hello to somebody. If you feel led to speak into the person's life, speak into the person's life, okay? All right. God bless you.